Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning friends, today we will be discussing about wing loading and thrust loading together to meet takeoff conditions. What is our aim? To meet takeoff maneuver. So far you have seen, we have talked about say, climb, we have talked about cruise, we have talked about loiter, range, but today most important thing we we'll talk about what should be the wing loading or how a designer should perceive wing loading to meet takeoff conditions. This takeoff and landing are two very important operations because you understand most of the accidents you will find maybe minor, maybe serious, happen during takeoff or landing. Right. For example, if you are trying to take off and you have not attained the required speed and you try to take off and you increase the angle of attack and it may go into a stall, it can fall like this, we call premature takeoff. Sometimes during landing, I'm coming for landing and the speed is much higher than desired, so it hits the ground and it may cause serious damage to the aircraft. You also know that if when I talk about V takeoff, this is some percentage of V stall. Could be this. Some percentage, 20% or 30% more than V stall. And to ensure that V takeoff is less, we try to see that V stall is less, V stall is again 2 W by S rho C L max and to reduce V stall we have two options, one is reduce the wing loading or increase C L max that is W by S I reduce or increase C L max. Once I try to increase or decrease W by S, once I try to decrease wing loading, that effectively means I want larger wing area, right? And larger wing area, although it will give you a lesser wing loading, so V stall will be less, but larger wing area means larger drag. So you need more power, okay? So you have to do a compromise. So another way is okay, you increase the wing area to some extent and also increase the CL max. How do you increase the CL max? You use flaps. There are various types of high lift devices. Using those you can increase CL max from 1.2 to even 5. Right? But you know that nothing is free as you increase CL max there will be increment in the drag and also it will generate more moment about the center of gravity. So this is a quick look on V stall. But when I come for takeoff, for a designer, he looks for what is that distance I require to ensure that after that it has enough speed and if it rolls up like this, you should be able to go for a takeoff. And as per the definition, you should clear 50 feet height. That is as per the regulations, right? Before we go for all those prescription of T by W and W by S, let us have a systematic look through physical modeling what is happening during takeoff. So if I draw a simple diagram. Let's say this is thrust, 
and uh, there is one landing gear and the landing gear somewhere here and CG somewhere here CG should be let us say somewhere here we try to keep CG slightly ahead of the rear landing gear otherwise if CG is at the back the slight disturbance will make the aircraft end point hitting the ground okay so generally CG will be little ahead of landing rear landing gear and if I now draw the diagram I will have some weight acting from here then there will be reaction R of course lift and drag lift and drag they will be acting at the aerodynamic center in fact we transfer all the lift and drag forces along with the moment to the aerodynamic center but for analysis what we do we further transfer those to center of gravity so when i write lift and drag assume there is a moment but that moment is balanced let's say for our case if i have this sort of a diagram then I can easily write F minus or F equal to T minus D minus mu R into W minus L and that equal to M dV by dt. What is this F? The net force acting that is thrust minus drag, then there will be frictional force mu R into R and R is nothing but L minus w so minus sign is here so mu r into w minus l so this is straightforward you have done in performance course now imagine when you are going for takeoff you are starting some v equal to 0 to v equal to v lift off that is the speed at which you will actually turn the aircraft increase the angle of attack and go for a climb the problem is as I am increasing from V equal to 0 to V equal to V lift off, the drag and lift is also going to change because they are function of speed. Right? A designer will not like to do all those meticulous things. Designer will like to do with some average values. He will try to look for some average acceleration which this net force is causing. Once he knows average acceleration and if it is correct, then he knows V square minus U square equal to 2 A S. So, S equal to V square by 2 A, where A is the average acceleration using this equation. Generally, it is seen that if I compute this aerodynamic force at 0.7 V lift off that is a good approximation to assume that I can use the concept of average acceleration for most of the aircraft. Okay. This is nothing new I am telling I am just revising whatever we have done in performance. Let us not lose the sight what we are looking for today is how do I visualize wing loading for a particular takeoff mission. So, if I use this concept that I can take this acceleration evaluated at 0.7 V lift off and use the concept of average acceleration. So, dv by dt will be this force divided by m and s v square minus u square equal to 2 a s. So, s equal to v square by 2 a where A is basically this force divided by mass evaluated at 0.7 V lift off and we know V lift off we can take 1.2 to 1.3 V V stall. Generally you will find the regulatory bodies give those numbers it is more skewed towards 1.2. Exact FA regulation I will be discussing when I will be solving a case. This is just to tell you how do you proceed. So, if I follow this, then I will get S lift off as V lift off square into W by G 
divided by 2 t minus d plus mu r w minus l this is average this. and if I take V lift off equal to 1.2 times V stall then I further get S lift off expression as S lift off equal to 1.44 W square by G rho infinity C L max into T minus D plus mu r into W minus L. If I am not wrong, just got a G rho. Yes. Now let us see how a designer will look into this expression so that he can find out the wing loading required for S lift off. There must be some S, yes, S is missing here, right. If I am a designer, I will ask myself what will be the contribution of this compared to the thrust, right, to have an initial number, right. Because at this point my aircraft is not completely ready, I do not know what is exactly the wing area, what is the CD naught. So what do I do? With experience I know these gentlemen may be 10 to 15 percent of the thrust. Okay. So I say okay, as a designer, I say let me neglect this term compared to thrust. So I will get S lift off equal to 1.44 W square by G rho infinity C L max S into T. This is a compact expression, but I would like to see where is wing loading hiding here and where is T by W thrust loading hiding here because we have agreed when I go for a takeoff, if I have more thrust or more thrust loading, I will be able to accelerate faster, right. So, S lift off has to be a function of T by W. If W by S is small, so wing area is large, so it will generate lift much earlier than if the area was less. So, W by S also plays a role, we have seen that. Where are these W by S and T by W hiding in this expression? and how a designer will draw its attention. So, designer first will simply see that S lift off goes directly proportional to the W square, weight square. That means, it is so sensitive to total weight and that is why the aircraft are classified in terms of weight also. So, below 700 kg, below 1500 kg, below 2500 kg like this classifications are there because the weight directly affects how much land roll distance you require to take off and that is one of the very important constraints for an aircraft operator. Also it tells you that S lift off goes inversely with air density from where you are going to take off. So imagine if you are design an airplane which is just adequate to take off in Delhi, right, and now you want to take off same aircraft from Leh, Ladakh, Leh area, which is a high altitude, lower temperature. Then what will happen? In Leh, this density of air will be much less compared to Delhi, so the lift off distance will increase. It is possible that you won't be able to take off with same load what you have been able to do in Delhi. So how will you handle that? Suppose I have got a full capacity passenger, I am able to take off in Delhi, right. And uh, now, same aircraft, I want to take off from Leh. So, what is the idea, or how the designer will tell, advise you, what do you do? Designer sees that it is proportional to W square. 
So it will okay, same aircraft I can take off from Leh, provided you have reduced the weight. How can you reduce the weight? Either you take less passenger or take a half fuel load you reduce. You take off from there, go to a nearby station where there is a enough land roll distances. That is how it is the operations are optimized. Okay. Another thing, you, uh, please remember, when you are taking off from Delhi with full load and you want to land in Leh, you know the weight has reduced because fuel consumption has happened. So that helps you reducing a, a lift off or, or a touchdown. Lift off and touchdown, you can see that they are almost equal, all very close, right? For normal general aviation aircraft. Also, I understand from here that S liftoff goes inversely with thrust. More thrust means liftoff distance will be less, which is correct. More thrust means more acceleration. So it will quickly get that V liftoff speed. So it will require a lesser distance. So nothing unusual. This is conceptually correct. But unfortunately, a designer will primarily think in terms of wing loading and thrust loading. That is W by S and T by W. So now how a designer will look or, or extract juice out of this expression through wing loading and thrust loading, I can write S lift off equal to 1.44 W by S divided by G rho infinity CL max T by W. They are equivalent expression, right? So now designer is more comfortable with this sort of an expression. These are all through analysis, you know. Somebody will give you expression. This is a simplest example. You will get lot of complicated expression derived by mathematician, aerodynamics, flight mechanics man. But as I told you, designer is not a huge, highly analytical person or highly a mathematical person. So he has his own vocabulary to extract information. And he will immediately translate this and look like this. Okay, I will see this expression as wing loading here. I know there is a thrust loading here. Right. So now what he will do, if there is a restriction by regulation that lift off distance would be 1000 meter. We will put 1000 meter here. And what is the wing loading or what is the thrust loading he can afford? During takeoff, he will give more weightage to a thrust loading. Right? So he will pick a thrust loading value T by W. Let us say he picks as 0.3. He knows that, okay, CL max I can increase by using flaps, high lift devices. So depending upon type of aircraft, see for example, if you are using Cessna 206, you will not put very complicated flaps, you will put a plain flap. If it is a 320, then you put a lot of complicated flaps, right? So depending upon the type of aircraft you are designing, type of passengers you are carrying or type of aircraft in terms of the aerobatic or the, or the, or the reconnaissance aircraft. You have an idea what type of high lift devices you are going to use. So you have an idea about CL max. So you put, okay, CL max, I will keep around 1.5. The moment he writes CL max 1.5, he has actually taken a decision what type of high lift device he is going to use. 1.5 means you will be using most likely a plane flap, right? If he puts 2.5, he 2 or 2.5. He knows you are going to use some fowler flap or, or some slat or slot, something you will do. So he also knows what is the density of air where from mostly going to operate. So he picks this, put this number and get what is the W by S required. Is this uh, thing clear? From this complicated expression, and designer is expected to do this sort of a preliminary analysis. That is where we call he has a feel for numbers and make the thing simpler and then translate it into the vocabulary which he will be using in configuring an aircraft. 
right. So, this approach we will be using when we do an exercise of designing an aircraft with a test case, right. Before I end this part, please note that this takeoff distance is described as S lift off plus the distance required to clear eleven meter. 11 meter means it is 30 feet or 50 feet. So, 30 feet or 50 feet depending upon military or civil specification. That is, I start from here, I come to a V lift off distance, then I rotate it, then I climb. Okay. All and this distance height is 50 feet or 30 feet. So, this is typically roughly the takeoff distance for a single engine aircraft. We will also talk about balance field length, maybe in the next, next lecture, that is primarily important for multi engine aircraft. That is, if one engine fails, then how do I take a decision whether I apply brake to halt or I continue for takeoff and do a circuit flying and come down. So that will be my next lecture. Okay. Thank you very much.